but this is uh, can be proved to be very helpful in certain case like suppose I have chlorobenzene and I have methyl iodide now if I add sodium now what will happen you tell me now if I add sodium now prefer preferentially this iodine deliberately I have kept a very good living group and this methyl is zero degree carbon so the, the, the hindrance of this antibonding of this methyl is not there there is no hindrance plus the living group is also very good so the electron will preferentially come in this antibonding orbital and a very very living group will leave out and a methyl free radical will be formed on the contrary if you have to form a phenyl free radical then the living group is not that good there will be a double bond character of this chlorine with this benzene and plus the movement of electron in the antibonding will not be easy for the reason we have discussed numerous times when we studied resonance because the antibonding of chlorine is inside the ring and above and below the plane of the ring we have huge electronic density carrying negative charge electron also having negative charge so basically electron is there in the ring and electron is coming from outside so there will be repulsion so that electron will not have a very fine time to get into the antibonding of chlorine so that will not be a walk in the park that will be very very difficult so the formation of phenyl free radical will be very difficult and the formation of methyl free radical is very easy so preferentially methyl free radical will be formed fine and if there is excess of electron then this free radical will be con get converted converted into an anion fine now if that happens now there is no other choice for this methyl uh, anion to react with there is only one option this methyl anion must do a SN2 reaction and remove this chloride ion and get on the top of the benzene to form toluene now this will not be a, again an easy reaction because again this is a SN2 reaction but methyl being a small in size that would take place so ultimately that chloride, chloride will be removed off and methyl will sit on the top of benzene and toluene will be formed right so if you can see this this is not a symmetrical as RR now in Wood's reaction we'll have we were having symmetrical product here we have pH CS3 and this is not symmetrical now Wood's reaction has a limitation of having only symmetrical alkene now in this reaction we have unsymmetrical alkene rather this is arene so Wood's fitic reaction would be for a formation of arene like toluene that's what Wood's fitic reaction is fine Fine. So Wood's fitic reaction is just the extension of idea of Wood's reaction and this is the concept that is used so that we can get a arene. This is Wood's fitic reaction. Fine. Now you can attempt this problem. Now in this problem you have been given E. First of all you must try this. If you don't try this, organic would be a nightmare for you. Now uh, organic would be very very easy. Uh, just you have to keep track of mechanism and you have to practice mechanism with your hand you just can't read it like this if you don't practice that is not going to come very naturally out of you now you must try this before you listen to the discussion this is E you have to find out E and this is the key here key is toluene once you find out E you can find rest of the thing now let's see how to solve this kind of conversion problem now this is toluene and this is methyl iodide and sodium now based upon the discussion we had have now up till now this has to be Wood's fitic reaction we have studied only four reaction and you will not have any pain to find out which reaction this is this is Wood's fitic reaction looking at the reagent sodium sodium has been used in only two reaction Wood's reaction Wood's fitic reaction Wood's reaction gives you symmetrical alkene this is toluene so this is Wood's fitic reaction now this methyl iodide is always the, this is toluene and this methyl iodide is coming from here so what must be E? E must be a halo benzene preferentially a chlorobenzene so E is a chlorobenzene no problem there now from E you are just adding sodium and you are getting D 
Now, because the reaction we have studied is very limited, only four, so you will not have any trouble at all to identify which reaction is happening when you are moving from E to D, right? So for now it's very easy, but when you study lot of reactions, it may take some time to identify which that reaction is. But if you keep on practicing the reactions as you study along, it will not be a problem at all. From E to D, it's a Wood's reaction. What happens in a Wood's reaction is a dimerization. So there is a there will be a formation of one phenyl uh, free radical, and those two phenyl free radical will dimerize to give you biphenyl, as we have discussed, right? So D is what is D? D is biphenyl. D is biphenyl. You have identified D. Now D is coming out of C, and on passing electricity. Now since the reaction done is so little, again you will not have any trouble understanding what the C is, because electricity has been used only in one reaction that is called Weyl electrolysis, and you know how to write the product. Now, in Col again, that Colby's electrolysis in Colby's electrolysis dimerization occurs. So, this part should be coming from one of the reagent, and it would have dimerized to give you biphenyl. So, in order to identify C, now we are we are dealing only with organic product, and when you carry out Colby's electrolysis, there are other products as well. There's a KOH, there's hydrogen gas, there's carbon dioxide gas, which has not been shown here. So you will not argue where are those products? Those are inorganic products. We are not interested. I am giving you only organic products. Now to get C, you have to just increase one carbon as we have discussed before, and that is very easy. Just just increase one carbon outside the ring, and you will get this. So C must be a sodium or potassium salt of benzoic acid. That means it must be sodium or potassium benzoic. Now C is get we are getting C from A. Look at the arrow properly. I didn't do any mistake. We are getting C from A on adding sodium. That means C is a sodium salt. It cannot be a potassium salt. Fine. Now we are getting C from A on adding sodium, and we are getting a sodium salt. Then what must be A? A you also get an idea because A is giving B on adding this reagent, and this reagent is the reagent of soda lime decarboxylation, and which occurs on an acid. So A is an acid. On an acid, when you add sodium, now this reaction uh, is a very common reaction, and this perhaps I have taught you when I taught you hydrogen bonding. Even if I didn't teach you, I'll quickly tell you now. What happens? Sodium, you know what sodium does. Sodium produces electron into the system, and that electron has to be accepted by someone. Like in the last reaction, that electron goes into the anti-bonding orbital. Suppose you have water. Right, and there are electrons, electrons, electrons in the system which sodium has produced like a machine gun. Right now, these electrons has to be accepted by someone. These electronic density can't go on increasing exorbitantly in the system. Now, this hydrogen here having is having a plus charge density because oxygen has snatched a lot of electronic density towards itself. So this this hydrogen is electron deficient. Now, these electrons are accepted by this hydrogen. Because hydrogen is having electron deficiency, now those electrons goes into the those electrons goes into the orbital of hydrogen directly. When that happens, H become H dot and OH minus comes out, as I have taught you in Colby's electrolysis, if you remember. And these H dot combine to give you hydrogen gas. Fine. And what is remaining? You have a sodium ion will be formed when sodium gives out its electron. Fine. And that sodium ion will form a compound with this OH minus. So you will have sodium hydroxide. Now, in case of acid, what happens? In case of acid, when you don't have water, suppose you have a carboxylic acid. Now, in case of carboxylic acid, this hydrogen, which is attached to oxygen, will accept electron because that is electron deficient. That goes out as hydrogen gas. What is left? Carboxylate ion. And where does sodium goes? Sodium forms a salt here. That is sodium carboxylate. Fine. So whenever a active metal is added to a compound containing active hydrogen, hydrogen gas is evolved and a sodium salt is formed. Now here I have shown only sodium salt. You can see sodium benzoate. We are adding sodium on something. We are getting sodium benzoate. That means A must be benzoic acid, the acid of this anionic part. 
and of course there will be a hydrogen gas evolved which I haven't shown fine so what would be A? what would be A? A would be benzoic acid fine no trouble good you have found A now from A to B if we go the name of the reaction you know by looking at the reagent that is soda lime decarboxylation and in soda lime decarboxylation nothing happens this CO2 goes off as the carbon dioxide gas and you get a RH in this case you will get a pH and pH is nothing but benzene so B is benzene that's how we found found all of them now this reaction there will be a lot more branching and lot more chains in this conversion as we study more and more reaction and this is the beauty of organic and you will start to taste organic chemistry how tasty it is right now you will get a feel more when we study more of the reactions so we have studied four reactions up till now and this conversion has I try to uh, combine all the reactions up till now whatever we have studied later on I'll be adding more reactions as we study more and more